And we're here for a special Thanksgiving edition of OMG Jake Hey. I'm Jason Kincaid. And I'm MG Siegler. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about in this very special Thanksgiving edition <laughs> is um, the news that News Corp is coming out with their own specialized iPad magazine slash right. newspaper. And I think it's called The Daily. The and Daily. Supposedly it's a collaboration between Steve Jobs slash Apple and News Corp and Rupert Murdoch. Right. Who sees an opportunity here that there, there isn't uh, a news publication that's really designed with the iPad in mind. They right. want to fill that. So everyone's like, you know, when the iPad came out, a bunch of magazines rushed to kind of port their magazines over to there, but they weren't really designed from the ground up with right. that in mind. That, that actually reminds me of that point is I remember when the iPad first came out reading a report that Steve Jobs was actually disappointed with the New, with York, New York Times. New York Times, yeah, right, right. Which, which initially, I believe, was called Editor's Choice. Yeah, it, it only had very very small amount of content mm -hmm. uh, compared to the overall uh, newspaper. They've since updated, and it's right. a lot better, but they have a premium version like Wall Street Journal has. Right, and, but I think the, the, the point is that the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, none of them have really done anything to, to reinvent right. the way they're presenting content. Right. It's... An, it's really just a, an optimized version of the website yeah and what's cool about this is this is an entirely on the ipad thing mm -hmm. or you know maybe in the future tablets but right now right. it's only going to be the ipad supposedly and there's going to be no online version and no print version some people will hate that you know like say like oh this is like this is going backwards or whatever right. but it's i mean this makes sense if they actually want people to read it otherwise people are just going to read it on the web right i mean i think there's a lot of potential if if you've got a publication that really it's not just superficially, it's not putting these this video in or this image in as a sort of a diversion or right. like a novelty. If it's right. really like enriching the content, I think there's a lot of potential there, but I think it's probably gonna be really hard because they're gonna be kind of inventing it as they go along. No yeah. one's really tried this before. So Agreed. I, they need they need to really nail the the concept of it, like how it's how you're going to interact with the actual uh, content itself and they have to nail the content of it. Because that's mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, you're only going to pay for something and this is paid, which is important. You know, it's ninety nine cents a week supposedly, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pretty good deal, but right. again, it's paid versus the web, which is all free. And, you know, it's all about how the content's going to go. Supposedly they have whatever, 100 reporters or 10 or I don't know what they said. Right. Working on this and making content specifically for this Well, I, I, yeah, I believe, I believe the number that's being thrown around is 100 and that they've actually recruited some fairly well-known people in the, in the industry. Uh, the thing that, as far as the content goes, I think they're, they're doing it once a day. Right? right, they're they're not going to be updating it throughout the day, which is really going to you know, stand in contrast to the way CNN.com, for example, is is done. Right, and I think there's going to be some tension there, where people are going to be used to having right. content on their iPad that is up to the minute, and now this this yeah, stuff that's it behind, almost feels it, like they would it would have been a better idea. And you know, this is of course before it launched, and who knows what it's actually going to be like. But right. you know, maybe if they would have done the blog idea, but had a rolling amount of content, so people keep launching the app throughout the day and like seeing mm. new fresh content in there. And to, to be clear, I think one of the rumors is that they will continue to update stories. But, okay, I, but I, not I think the point ones. is that maybe maybe not new ones. I think it will be more like a newspaper in that respect. That there yeah. is a time, like sort of a cutoff time for the stories. I, and that you only have to really check it once a day. Yeah. Which, which there is a point to that. I do think this constant news cycle, some people just like to get yeah, sort of sure. a concise an overview, overview and stuff. Yeah, and if they're not focusing on breaking news, I guess that's okay. But, you know, the, the whole idea is still that it has to be great content or else people right. will, you know, buy into it at first for the novelty mm -hmm. and then they just won't buy it. And ultimately, I just... I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they can really differentiate themselves for, from the the iPad version of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Because it's easy for us to say, right. well, those didn't reinvent themselves, but what really can they do differently? Well, so, you know, the rumor is that it's going to be, I think, like the New York Post a little bit, but for a, a national audience, so it's going to be over the whole United States. So it's going to be a little bit edgier, I guess, is, okay. is the rumor of it. So, you know, you could see it like in the mold of maybe like a Fox News, maybe not super conservative, but, you know, like that kind of give over me the, the willies top. at all. Yeah. No, but, you know, not, not a political bent. Assuming it's not, I don't know, but you know, but so, kind of like over the top commentary, you know, um, and get things that you know get people really psyched up to read whatever it is. I mean, I think that sort of thing sells. Yeah, I don't know if they really need more of it in the world, but right. Well. And you know, the idea is that the talk right now is that it's only for the iPad. The iPad, of course, is the most popular tablet right now, but in the future, this could be you know for every tablet or for many tablets and, mm. and things like that. Yeah, like I said, I think that the issue they're going to face is how to differentiate themselves is already out there. Yeah. It's like, it sounds great on paper, but then execution, it's just going to be tough. And this is still just Rupert Murdoch 
going forward with his idea that someone's got to pay for the content. That's been his whole thing. I don't think he's wrong. I think there will be some solution where people do get used to paying for content. And I think it'll be in very small amounts at a time as opposed to like $100 up front. You'll pay a dollar a week. You know, I think think people actually get used to that. And that's something that uh, apparently in order to make this newspaper reality, uh, Apple's going to release an update that'll allow uh, publications to have recurring subscriptions. Right, that's a key. I mean, right. the, the magazine thing right now is so annoying. The fact right. that you can buy a magazine, but you have to buy it each time for five dollars. Which, which I think is a good lead into our second topic, which was uh, iOS 4.2, which is what finally brings the iPad up to date with, with the feature set right. of the iPhone 4, which obviously came out back in June. Right. And the iPad hasn't had an update since it launched. R- well, it had a in smaller terms, update. In terms of yeah, features. Yeah, right. It, it was still on iOS 3. So this is the fir- first time the unification of the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the iPad. So it got multitasking. It's got you know the folders, ability, folders, which is great. <laughs> Finally, I was actually really happy about that. Oh, I've got so a, many I've people got are happy about it. I know it's literally. so annoying to have to scroll through all those. Now I have two little uh, pages. You and know, I think I think folders. one thing of the update that we really need to talk about is how it deleted all of your music. <laughs> right. This is this is sort of a joke. So, but there actually there was a bug where you would for some users you'd install 4.2 and then And your, this was on the iPhone. Though um, some people were saying it was on the iPad Touch too, it, but it, your music library was apparently gone. It wasn't gone, it was it, just hidden and all you had to do just was basically it. resync it. So as as bugs go, this was Apple, if it's going to have a bug, at least it's good about it and makes it easy to fix it, right? As opposed to Android, where right, I'm sure exactly. you would An- Android tried bloody you, murder. Right. It, they, they, something would have blown up the iPhone, the Android phone probably would have exploded <laughs> in your pocket and anyway, ruined that, your ability to have children. Enough of my jabs against Apple. Uh, yeah. I, I do think 4.2 is, is important. I mean, let's talk a little bit about AirPlay, which is one of the more yeah. interesting features that. Yeah, so that's something that's completely new that hasn't been on the iPhone version either of iOS 4. Right. So AirPlay is pretty sweet. You know, it's. Um, you can basically launch the video app uh, within the iPad and you just hit one button and then you can send it over to your Apple TV and it'll start playing on your uh, HD television. And, and for the most part, it's it's pretty seamless. I was playing around with this, uh, I think it was yesterday, and it, there was a little bit of a delay when you hit that button to right. send it to your TV. It was a couple seconds. But it really wasn't, I mean, I could definitely see a lot of people using using the iPad to figure out what they want to watch. Yeah. And, and then just send it to it. the TV. Right. The biggest thing I was worried about was the battery life issue. You know, like, oh, God, I'm not going to sit there and let it play from my iPad and drain the battery. But it took, like, no battery off of it as long as right. you had the screen off. Because the screen, you know, is the majority of the battery anyway. So it's like I watched an entire two-hour movie, and it took it from 100% down to 94%. And, and I do think the potential here, and this is something that uh, John Gruber of Journey Fireball actually talked about, uh, is that once you, right now it only supports YouTube and the video of that, but eventually right. it will probably support movies you've shot yourself, yep. which is where the, a lot of this right. power comes from. Right, because you, they do that with photos already. You can easily push push a photo via AirPlay over so, to your TV. So you go out, you take a bunch of movies, you right. want to show these movies to your friends, and right. instead of having, I mean, frankly, that process has been a total oh, pain God, in yeah. the ass you before have to, now. You know, like luckily now a lot of TVs have USB ports, but before they didn't, and so it's like even when they do, dealing with USB is like yeah, oh, you I have know, the cable, still, do you have the right. uh, compatible ca- adapter or card, yeah. or the alternative is sitting in front of your computer, and who really wants to do right. that? Right, this is much more seamless. Yeah, you could go to any friend's house, and as long as they have an AirPlay enabled device, and that's mm-hmm. another key. Right now, it's only the Apple TV, but eventually there will be maybe TVs with it built in. You know, mm-hmm. they're 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 open to letting a lot of people do this. So. Are, is Apple open to this? That's what they said. Yeah. We'll see. Have they uh, opened up the uh, FaceTime thing yet? I don't I think, don't so. think said, anyone's said, building anything. For they it said yet. it was open. I just haven't. I don't know if it's out yet. Anyway, uh, so so what else in, in four point two is really exciting? Um, um, AirPrint is kind of another one of those things. It's kind of cool. You know, it's, it's cool to see it in action because we've you know gone for however many years now with all these drivers needed for to be able to print something, and it's just so ridiculous that mm. you need to do that. In this, you just literally hit one button, and then it starts printing. And it's it's worth pointing out that Google is actually working on their own solution yeah, for, for the same for problem. Chrome OS was one of the right. main drivers behind that. Exactly, and and their their idea is that. Uh, you don't have to worry about drivers. Basically, these computers are connected to the cloud, yeah. and Google servers sort of set, they process it and send it to the printer. Right. Apple's solution is it, it sounds like you have to buy a special printer that supports AirPrint. Right. Their HP is making like a half dozen of them right now. There's and, a few other ones out there. I, I think the issue here is that most people already have their printers and aren't going to go out and buy a new one. Yeah. And my understanding was that this was going to have a feature, and I don't know if it actually made the cut, maybe not yet, where you could hook up a printer to your Mac. And it would the Mac would sort of yeah I'm not sure if that, that I'm possible. not sure if that works or not 
you know, they were they were hinting maybe that there would be some kind of adapter that you could use, you know, mm -hmm. like plug into the back of the, the USB drive in the printer or whatever. But yeah. Um, so yeah, moving on, the uh, the last thing we were going to talk about today is I've completely gingerbread <laughs> was uh, gingerbread was which, gingerbread which yes. everyone still kind of I forgot I've got it because it's not out yet. Where it is was it? supposed to be out. So those the the little. Um, uh, guys, the figurines were put on the lawn how long ago? Right, they put the gingerbread, I think it's been at least two, maybe three weeks by now. And uh, they were, I mean, Google's been definitely trying to build up a little bit of buzz. One of their Google accounts posted a photo of right. cookies. Ginger, ginger, gingerbread man cookies. Right. Uh, I think that was at least a week ago. Yeah. And it still hasn't come out yet. And I think, so Google's obviously trying to, to build up buzz. Uh, we, we wrote a report a couple weeks ago saying that the phone they were hoping to launch with, which was the Nexus S, right. uh, was delayed. Right. And I, th I still think that's the case. Uh, but Eric Schmidt came on stage during uh, Web 2.0 Summit right, last week one. With, with a gingerbread. And they're definitely and all device. using it internally. Oh, they, like so many people have that phone. They, they definitely, it exists. It's right. definitely real. Uh, it's apparently delayed. And I suspect that when they first announced that gingerbread was on its way. Actually, I don't think Google actually announced it. They just right, put the but, statue in front. Right, right. But it's, it's the same thing. I doubt they realized that it was going to be delayed because this is a, a significant gap and the buzz is sort of, right. it, it hit a peak and now it's sort of like, eh, where is it? Where is and Gingerbread? And the talk is that when Gingerbread does get released, it will at first only come to the Nexus One. Right. Uh, so that would be a li really limiting again. Well, I, I think that's the way, the reason why we're waiting so long. I think Google wants to time the launch of, of the Gingerbread upgrade with the Nexus S yeah. because it will be the only device that can take advantage of the new features. So how long do you think that will be? December I'm, sometime? I mean, I, I'm hoping so. I'm sure Google is trying to get out as soon as quickly yeah. or as, as quickly as possible. Uh, I think we should talk about the, the feature that Eric Schmidt, Eric Schmidt brought the phone out on stage right. and was really coy about what it was and he wouldn't show what the device, even the back of the device. Right. But he did show one feature, which was uh, NFC, near field communication. It's this chip that was on the phone that Gingerbread apparently supports, right. where you you have your phone, and if, if a retail outlet has a special sensor, you can pay with your credit card by simply tapping your phone right. against it. That's does, huge. That is huge. Does that mean trouble for something like Square, which, of course, their whole business is kind of predicated on making it easier to accept payments? I think, well, so I think their argument would probably be that you'd need a sensor of your own. Right. But then again, if, if, two, if both phones have the same sensor, could they swap probably tap them yeah. together. I'm sure they'll have come up with a reason why. Yeah, Square yeah. I mean, so that's helpful. true. Their argument is that it's not so much the payment part that's hard; it's the accepting the payment part that's hard, and so right. they've they've perfected that. Yeah. So it's all about that. Sensor. In any case, it's still. I mean, using your phone as a credit card is a huge, yeah. and b something that Apple was supposedly going to be the first one to do, and it looks like Google's beating into the punch. Um, but so what's the case for, you know, retail outlets? Are they equipped to, you know, accept payments uh, on behalf of these devices already? Do you have well, any I, idea? I suspect, oh, I have no idea if they're equipped. To, I mean, some of the, uh, sometimes you go to a gas station, you'll have this, the cards that you can, right, you can just, you put can up just wave there, yeah. in front. It doesn't usually work the first time, so you wave <laughs> right, it again. Right. But uh, the idea, it's a work in progress. I, I suspect this contactless, contactless payment system, um, if they really wanted to roll it out, it wouldn't take that long to do. Uh, it'd just be a matter of getting the devices in the retailer's hands. And this is a really cool thing. There are other countries that you know have dabbled in this for a while, and I think it's pretty widespread in some it's, some Asian. It's countries. definitely the future. Yeah. And also, there's there are other potential uses of this chip, like yeah. you said, uh, person to person right. transferring. It's of, kind of, of like data. the bump, you yeah. know, idea, the bump app. Bump, but now. Uh, bump either loves this a lot because it's going to make it possible <laughs> to do we'll it without, it because, or will hate it yeah. because they're going to have some standardized open way to transfer contact data using this this uh, technology. Right. Uh, but, it, but it definitely is exciting. And also, there could be loc location uses for it. That was actually what he showed off on stage. Right. Is they had a nice, goofy-looking Google place mark thing right. like, from the that maps, and he just tapped it. And, and that's what uh, Facebook was trying out originally. You know, before they launched their whole location thing, they were doing the presence thing. They were experimenting <laughs> the with The first that. thing was the keg bot that they Right. Used. I think they still have it. Yeah, they, they had that uh, F8 also earlier right. this year. And I think it's just sort of a side project that someone came up with, and they're keeping it alive. But that could be huge for them too. You know, if, if these phones all get that embedded in it, and then Facebook, you know, places could use all these. Uh, oh, these I phones think to I check think this places. time next year, every Android device and every new iPhone and probably iPod Touch are all going to have this technology. So yeah, be this is going to be a really really fast adoption rate, I think. Yeah. So I think that does it for this episode of OMG JK. Uh, make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and enjoy your Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys.